Oh, hello. I didn't hear you come in. How's it going today? Hello, I am so excited today. One of my favorite topics is light. We have four students. We are going to take them on what we call a light walk. And we're gonna cover the most basic principle of photography, light. Really figuring out how to see beautiful light, all natural. I'm a huge fan of natural light. That's why I'm bringing the sunshine in today. When I very first started out, some of the best advice from a master cinematographer I got was learn to see light. That's what we're gonna practice today, and that's what we're gonna help our students practice. We find that a lot of people are so afraid of certain types of light, the middle of the day, direct light, all of these wonderful things that the sun gives us. A lot of people are afraid to shoot between the hours of, you know, 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock and they save their shoots for early in the morning or later in the evening when the light's getting softer and lower. A lot of people often ask us, how do you light your stuff? How do you do this? And for Tanya and T and I, almost all of our lighting is accomplished using natural light and just learning how to see it and learning how to use it. And today, that's what we're going to practice. We are going to tackle their fears today and show them some really simple ways to utilize that light. One of my favorite times to shoot is actually 12 noon. And people think I'm a nutcase, but I'm gonna show you today a little bit how you can be not afraid to shoot at any time of day anymore, um, which is a huge, huge blessing because it's gonna just free you up. You can go out and shoot at noon if you like because you're gonna learn how to see with your eyeballs the most beautiful natural light that the sun provides us. You guys are in luck because in just a few minutes we are heading out to an amazing location. A couple of days ago Tanya, Tia and I got in a vehicle <laughs> with some of our associate producers and we headed out and found this amazing barn type location. It's completely desolate, it's got built up garbage, it's got animal carcasses, it's got big barn doors, it's got silos, it's got everything. We're gonna cover every type of natural light today all in one amazing location. And uh, make magic in their little boxes. It is amazing what you can accomplish using only natural light. Hi guys! So group hug, quick group Woo. hug. You guys are brave for coming out here on Light Walk. So listen guys, I know you're all really excited as I am to learn a little bit about natural light. I'm Jeff Carter, I've been shooting photography for over 30 years, but I've only been doing photography for about three years. I have been trying to change my style of photography to glamour and HDR. My name is Tara Pugmeyer and I've been a photographer for four years and I shoot newborns, seniors, and families. I also am just starting a backdrop company too. I'm printing backdrops for photographers who shoot all that kind of stuff too. My name is Gretchen Nishitani and I've been a photographer for, this is my third year starting out and I primarily shoot high school seniors. My name is Billy Bowers and um, I'm a freshman in high school. I've only done photography for three days now I'm just really getting interested and want to learn more. I love shooting in natural light and I very rarely um, use any kind of studio flash or strobes or anything like that. So I feel like this is one area of expertise I can offer you guys. Of course I've seen Tanya T and Ryan's work. It's rad and they are rad people too. They're the best! Thanks for saying that. You didn't have to. <laughs> They're the best. Okay, well I, I work with a lot of um, famous celebrities and these are the best ones I've worked with because they're so real and stuff. <laughs> okay, that was good. I've seen their work. I've seen Ryan uh, in some videos and of course I've uh, seen some of Tanya's work on the interwebs here and there and also in some of the films. I have seen Ryan and TNT Dynamite um, on the web and you know on framed and so I'm really excited to get to know them and get to work with them. What is it that makes beautiful natural light? Like what makes some light better than others? What I really want to learn today is confidence so that way I can direct glamour models easier. 
Well, my thing is I'm very anal and controlled, and so I don't shoot like outside the box, and I think they're gonna really help me with that. It's impossible to see light with your sunglasses on. So first rule, no sunglasses all day long. Those gotta go. I don't know, I just think it's a super cool medium and hobby, and a lot of people do it, and my mom is a photographer, and she kinda got me thinking about it. There's one magic thing that will be very close by, basically in the house of every single beautiful natural light scenario. And he's a really good friend of mine, and I wanna introduce you to him because he's gonna be your best friend. His name is Big Whitey. Can we give a, yay, Big Whitey. Big Whitey's in the house. I wanna learn not to be afraid to shoot in high noon. I want to learn how to read light, how to feel the light, learn how to work it and not have that fear of I have to wait for the golden hour and you know, make myself stand out in a whole sea full of senior photographers. Have you guys ever heard of Big Whitey before? No. No. <laughs> no, okay, so let me tell you, where Big Whitey might exist in natural light, in, na in reality, on photo shoots. Big Whitey naturally occurs all over, all the time, in every lighting scenario where you're gonna find natural, yummy natural light. Okay, so, Big obviously, arms are obviously right <laughs> now, Big Whitey is my friend Ryan. These guys are like my best friends already, and we haven't even had a chance to talk together very much, but they're just like my kind of crowd. I would love to hang out with these guys all the time and do photography with them all the time. You don't actually need Big Whitey to come on, like this guy, uh, at every photo shoot that you guys yeah, do. So instead it. of bringing Ryan along in the white sheet, we have to learn where to find Big Whitey in natural environments, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to shoot at high noon, that's what they do, so they're gonna teach me some skills. I think it's just cool how there's different films and digitals and how they contrast light and how that affects your image and your final product. I don't want you shooting today because I want you to learn to see the light with your eyeballs, okay? And if you're in your camera, then you're not gonna be focused on what you're hearing, all the other sights and, and sounds and all the other, the five senses which you need to learn light, okay? Because light just doesn't happen with your eyeballs. It's also in here a little bit, you feel it. So I just have to own it and rock it and make sure that I take all I can from today. We're going to basically walk around this beautiful property. We're going to find that light. You don't need your cameras, but you do need your cameras to learn to meter the light. Okay. Because telling, <laughs> seeing the light with your eyeballs is right. one right. half of the right. process. The other half is you have to be able to then tell your camera how to see that light so that it reads it the way you're seeing it. Sometimes the camera doesn't know what your eyeballs are seeing. Most of the time it doesn't know. So we need to also be able to tell our cameras how we're interpreting that light for yeah, us Yeah, we'll today. show you two different ways. Tanya likes to do it with her camera and I like to do it with a handheld light meter. Yep. But it gets the same results. Ting! Okay. <laughs> so are you guys ready to do this? Yes. 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 All right, let's All add right, some let's models and yep. get going. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a series of pictures. These are all in the light, what we call undercover light, okay? Mm -hmm. Can anyone guess what undercover might be? Under something. Under something is good, under what? Under Big Whitey. Under Big Whitey could be like a day like today. <laughs> we are definitely under Big Whitey, but what else could undercover be? In a room, in a building, inside. A building is good, not kinda sort of. Overcast? An overcast. overcast is perfect example. Okay. But the main thing we're looking for is under, it's in shade. Right. So another word for undercover light would be what we usually refer to as open shade, right? These are all photographs that are taken in open shade. Okay, and see it's a nice mm -hmm. flat light. So now how do you find open shade? Open shade is one of the easiest ones to find. All you need to find, if it's, a, if it's 12 noon, you just need to find a shaded area and put your subject under it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> not too hard, but not all open shade is created equal. And we're gonna show you what makes some open shade better than others, okay? okay. So Ryan, why don't right. you start? So the trick to finding open shade, no matter where you are, is to locate a north facing wall. Because the sun, moves from east to west a little bit in the southern sky. If you have a north facing wall, the sun's always gonna be behind it and it's just gonna be traveling like this, never changing the light very much. So a north facing wall is always the easiest way to find open shade. 
Um, like Tony was saying, not all open shade is created equal because with the open shade and you're looking for big whitey, we're looking for what our reflected sources of light are gonna be on the model. Behind us, we have a big white silo, which is adding reflection. You wanna look for what colors are gonna be reflected, anything like that. If we had harsher sun, where she was walking closer to this and we were losing the open shade, then a workaround would obviously be to keep her in this type of light, but add another big whitey closer. Like you can see in her eyes between that and that. So that's two different ways of doing it. They're gonna be able to have uh, more variety and not have as much fear of being out in the middle of the day and playing with that bright sun. So right now I've got Fuji 400H. That's a 400 ASA film. So I've got my light meter. <laughs> I've got it set to 400 and I've got my aperture set to 28, which is about what I want to shoot at. Now what the meter is telling me is 28 at 2000. What any meter reading will give you in camera or your meter is middle gray. That's what light meters do. So the whole key to this look is getting your middle exposure but then overexposing it a couple of stops to add that glow, that high key, that open shade look that everybody loves. So while this said 2.8 and a 2,000 for me, I'm gonna shoot this at 2.8 at a 1,000 and it's gonna be brighter and beautiful. Can I have someone hold this maybe on both sides, just right here? Um, the reflector is gonna add a little more light than what we just metered, obviously, but with film, you want to, with color negative film, you wanna err on the side of overexposure, too much exposure. A couple things that look awesome on camera, okay. which if you're coming slightly towards camera, just be aware of kind of where your chin is, just bringing, elongating your neck and bringing your chin down and out. Okay. It's awesome. It's really interesting to shoot with another photographer, especially one as talented as Tanya, but that where we have such different styles. Sometimes a part of me wishes I shot more like her, a little more involved yeah, in the you. directing, a little more emotional, a little more and, um, connected, but, uh, but my style is what it is and I like it and other people like it. So I'm, I'm just trying to remember that that's not me. I don't have to shoot like that. I just gotta keep doing what I do. Oh, perfect. Oh, I love your braid. That looks so awesome. Okay, so if you just look at me right here. One like that, that was so beautiful. And now if you can just rotate your shoulders towards me a little bit, even turn a little more profile. Are you okay if I move you? Mm -hmm. You'll just turn like this. Yep, and I just wanna have, and then just kind of tilt your head this way a little bit. I just want that braid to hang just like that. And if you guys will just bring the reflector to like right here, then I'm gonna shoot right over it. One more. Right there. And well, that's the thing with film, we're not gonna take a million pictures, that's it. I got it for sure. Sometimes my style is really dependent on the one-on-one -on -one connection and just the intimacy of the moments. I'm usually alone with my subjects. There's usually not a lot of people watching and shooting and directing. and So I really want to work on being able to connect with the subjects in the same way I do, even with a big audience. The location was like a dream come true for me. Like everything old and decrepit, stinky, <laughs> paint, you name it, I love it. The location was breathtaking. The, my favorite part was the barn. Seriously, if I could buy that barn and turn it into my house, I would. Oh. As a matter of fact, this is actually a souvenir because this trophy was found right out there on the premises. Right next to a dress that we found <laughs> that we almost put on the model. <laughs> and we probably would have, but it just didn't fit her quite the way we wanted it to. Breathe it out, okay? One, two, three, boom. <laughs> Today was like so a little bit frustrating. It was a little bit hard because I wanted to do so much more shooting, but we had so many different types of light to cover that we weren't able to get all the shots that I had dreamt of. Like walking through that amazing location, we have amazing models. Like Tia did this amazing, fabulous job on the hair and makeup, and then it was like, oh, I got to take like two pictures. That is so not fair. So the next type of lighting we're going to talk about is one of my very, very favorites. It's called 
barn door light, okay? Barn door light is amazing because even if it's raining outside, which sometimes when you plan a photo shoot, it just rains outside and you have to get out there and you don't, you know, what are you gonna do? Sometimes if you're shooting a wedding, like what are you gonna do if it's raining? You have to have a backup plan. So I love barn door light, not only in full sun. In full sun, it works like a charm. Even in overcast light like we have today, it works like a charm. And it works awesome in rain. <laughs> they don't get wet. Okay, so a barn door doesn't technically have to be a barn door. It could be a door that's located, a doorway that is located in a barn, or it could be in a home, in a shopping mall, in anywhere. Anywhere there's a nice doorway. Usually, if you're doing a north facing door where Big Whitey is going to be present, the Big Whitey is the key part here because Big Whitey is not all barn doors are created equal. Um, Big Whitey needs to be there to bounce in on that doorway. Okay, so Big Whitey is really important for barn door light as well. So, this is our example of our barn door right here. We're going to be using, so you can see it's not a barn door, it's actually a silo door. But if she steps back into the light, come over here so you can kind of see. Go ahead and step back in, like three steps back. Take more, take more, take more. Just watch how as she slowly walks towards us, the light gets better and better and better on her face. Boom, right? Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so your client doesn't even have to leave the door. And if it's full sun and the sun's shining here, you don't want them to step out because they're gonna be in this lovely, beautiful, light just right back from the sun. Big Whitey's in the house. What's Big Whitey here? So we have all this whiteness, oh. all this light, even here, the light here, here on the ground is casting back up and bouncing into her face. That's why this light in this particular doorway works very, very well. When you're shooting in barred door light, it's really essential that you meter her on her face spot meter because if you don't, your camera's gonna compensate for all this blackness and it's not gonna give you the right exposure. So this is really key why you need to learn to manually meter in spot mode um, everything you shoot. Now we're telling our camera that this is the most important part. The beautiful thing about barn door light, everything behind her falls off black, even if it's not really black like it is here. Even if it's a little bit lighter, it will still kind of go mostly black, okay? Okay, deep breath, let your fingers come, let your thumbs come right out of your pockets. Just relax into it. Put both weight on both feet. Just kind of, ooh. Ooh, pretty honey, right there. One, two, and three. Gorgeous. Billy, what we're going to look for right now is what TNT like to refer to as glow light. And it's kind of just a variation on the barn door light. We're here in another barn door type situation with a big door, big reflective surface right here being big whitey, bouncing light onto her. And when you find something like this, glow light is usually really nearby. So we're going to show you how to find that. Right here, where we're just looking at the light, this is barn door light. But as you kind of walk back into barn door light, you can come back this way, Ashley. When you back up, the light on her face starts to get more of that glowing quality. Because instead of the huge reflective surface, your reflective surface is becoming smaller. We have the dark background and a small reflective surface. So it kind of adds that glow to the face. And if you'll come back even more, just kind of like leaning back up against this, if you don't mind, kind of like right here, we get into this really pretty glow light. If you go too far, you start backing up and you get out of your reflector's range, you kind of lose the pretty light on the face. Back here, too much. But when you find that sweet spot that's in between too dark and too light, that's where you get this glow light. Because we're gonna have these lovely bright tones on her face and then the darks are just gonna kind of fall off. So my meter says 2.8 at a 250th. But the same thing with color negative film, you always want to err on the side of overexposure. So I'm going to shoot 2.8 at a 125th, and we're going to get a beautiful picture right now. So if you'll just kind of lean back into this, yeah, that's so great. Yep, perfect. And when you just pull your hair away a little bit and now lean back into it, I'm just going to kind of hold it so it doesn't poof up too much. And I'm going to look down this, right, like this, because I want to use this orange in my composition. So I'm just placing that in the frame. And these lines behind you are going to look so beautiful.
And we got it, for sure. Awesome. That's low light. Low light. The models were both really easy to work with. It's always such an unknown factor when you work with your subject for the first time because you can see pictures of them and you can talk to them, but you never know until you have that face-to-face -face meeting. And the two girls that showed up, our models today, they were so, they couldn't have been more perfect for the farm fresh look. So right when they showed up, of course, you, you know, you get all kinds of pictures in your head. The models were fantastic, like so professional, just like, wow, they like took my breath away. I just wanted to shoot them all day long. And the sad part was we had so little time to actually do so much shooting because we were just all talking about light. What we're going to talk about now is what we call Love You Long Time Light. <laughs> the reason why TNT call it Love You Long Time Light is because it's kind of the go-to. Like if you're stuck in a situation where you're struggling, this is like the go-to light that you can find um, anywhere there's a building, okay? So um, this is a great one if you're an event photographer or you need to shoot indoors because the weather's kind of bad outside, this is your go-to. Love You Long Time, it works every time. But not all of you long time light is created equal, which we're gonna illustrate now. What we know so far is what? Who needs to be present for it to be amazing? Big lighting. Okay, so let's go find it. All right, Jeff, so we are now inside an old building <laughs> and there's windows galore, but what I really want you to see is how not all light is gonna be created equal, okay? Right now, I really love this light that we have on her. What, 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 what did we learn about this kind of light? This is glow light. This is glow light. With window light, the beauty is you can get glow light from it. Beautiful glow light with windows. Now, I just want to watch what happens to the light. I'm going to open the blinds a little bit so you can kind of see what, what might happen. Hopefully, I'm going to open them. Let's see if they actually open. Watch the light on her face, Jeff. So what I'm illustrating here is just how the glow light got just a little bit more poppy, a little more poppy. It's beautiful, right? right. Now. I'm going to shoot her against the wall, but I'm going to show you guys, as we bring her closer to Big Whitey, I want you to see if the light on her face change, okay? Cool. Right now, T, her looks gorgeous. Okay. Actually, very slowly, just watch the light on her face change as she walks closer to Big White. And Jeff, we're in Big Whitey a little bit, so mm. watch it change. The closer she gets to Big Whitey, the better the pop, the better the light gets, right? And not better, just changes it. Cleaner, brighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, knowing that the closer you get your subjects to Big Whitey, sometimes not necessarily being in it, but the closer they get to it, the prettier the light gets as they walk in. Okay, what we're gonna do right now is capture a silhouette. We have the model up here against the doorway. It's super beautiful. The light is gonna be the sky out here. And instead of taking a meter reading and say exposing to bring this up to bright, we're gonna leave this as dark and expose for the sky. So what I'm gonna do is just step right out to the other side of her. And I'm gonna take this meter reading for the sky um, instead of metering her, because when we meter the sky to the middle, the dark tones are gonna to come down and be dark, and that's what's gonna create this silhouette effect. Um, so I got my meter reading of four at a thousand. Uh, so I got that all set in my camera. We have, uh, we kind of posed her right here to have a really nice silhouette right here, nice shape and everything. So I just metered the sky, it told me four to 1,000, so that's exactly what I set my camera to. We're calling this the shadow dancing light. That means silhouette. Tanya's gonna and do a tiny your, bit of directing. Turn to the side, right there. And then take your hands and put them in your hand and then just let your head sort of fall back. Ooh, right there. Close your eyes. So 
So we are not blessed with this particular kind of light today, <laughs> which really stinks because we would love to show a little bit more direct light, but because you know how it rolls, we aren't in charge of the sky. That's only God's, uh, that's God's doing. We, um, I'm gonna do my best to just kind of describe to you guys how to capture this type of light. A lot of people are freaked out by direct light. We call it in your face light um, because it's right in their face. So let me ask you guys, based on the photographs that we see here, tell me what Big Whitey is in these pictures in direct light. Any guesses? Sun. Hey. Jeff, Jeff is graduating. <laughs> Where's that trophy? We need to give him yeah. a trophy. So the sun is actually Big Whitey in these photographs. Um, and as you can see, there's something going to be in common. As we look through this series of photographs, there's something in common. Let's see if you guys can point it out. Can you all see it? Can you see the pictures? I know it's kind of hard out here. They're facing the sun. They're facing the sun. They're facing right into the sun, right? right? But I want you to see what else might kind of be in common here. Their faces are up. Uh -huh. Bingo! Definitely. Okay, because what normally happens clouds. if you put someone at high noon right into the sun, what happens? Shadows shadows. You get these horrible shadows under here. So in order to make those shadows disappear, it's not actually moving them out of the light. It's moving them in the light. You just bring their face up to the light and they're gone. It's like, dude. So sometimes it's not a matter of changing light altogether. It's just moving your subject in that light. As you can see, Direct light's beautiful, it's really dramatic, there's nothing to be afraid of, and I would encourage you all to practice it. I am gonna show you, if this was direct light right now, I'm gonna show you how Kat would, how I would position her in it to where it would really work and like scream. This is the one instance where I actually um, matrix meter for the whole scene, and I overexpose a little bit to compensate for all the brightness. The main thing is if Kat is um, keeping her chin right about here, and we have the direct light coming in. You all said it, what happens? Shadows, Shadows under her eyes, okay? So this is kind of like, we have to create a little drama and utilize the direct light. So I might have her bring her face up. What I like to do too, is I always tell the, the subjects to bring their cheekbone up, right? And they can really understand that, like lead with your cheekbone, whoop, float it up. So in this position, if she was here, it's very dramatic and she's moody and she even closes her eyes. Sometimes your clients don't want to look into the bright light because they're seeing the sun, which is hard, right? So you, there's two little tricks you can do. One is let it be an eyes closed picture, right? So let's just close your eyes and bring your chin up and sort of float. Mm, that's how, that'd be so pretty. And then I would say, okay, cat, close your eyes and be here. And then when I count to three, you're just going to pop them open. One, two, three, open, boom. And that's when you get your shot. Have her close them again, because it's gonna be bright. So be ready. We didn't quite get all the types of light we want, but that's how it goes sometimes. You work with the light you have when you're a natural light shooter. You know, we wore the yellow shirts. We tried our hardest to bring the sunshine, but you know, God had other plans today. The clouds came out. What, what were we gonna do? It was like we brought all those people out there to learn light, and then we have one amazing light. We have open shade. You know, even though we didn't have the bright light, the direct light, I learned basically how to pose my models so that in any situation, if I have that light, that I'm going to have a successful image no matter what. But you know what, that just goes to show you that we're not in control and it just doesn't always happen the way you dream and yet you still go forward and make the best of what you're given. Ah, you know, that angel light, that was just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous light. I love that. But I also like the, the glow light. I just like the soft, the subtle, um, catch those, those sentimental moments and those types of lights. And then, of course, you know, if, if I want it to be a little bit more in, out in the open, I, I'm definitely going to try some of that direct lighting because it's one of those things that a lot of people are typically afraid of but I just want to face it head on now. We didn't do the direct light today, but we got some great tips on direct light. And uh, just as much as teaching the lighting styles helped me today, watching them work with their models was just as beneficial as awesome. So the kind of light we're talking about now is angel singing. And the reason we call it angel singing light is because when you see the image, you just hear that. <laughs> a more easily rememberable way to talk about this is calling it backlight. 
Um, so we've got this backlit image right here that I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we did it. This image, as opposed to having direct light and sun behind them, she's actually in the shade. Like, there's not a lot of light hitting her, but you have the sky behind her where all the light's coming from. And the way you get the effect is by metering for the face. So when I meter her, and I meter her skin, and then I overexpose her face, it brings her face up to that, those bright tones. And then that's the beauty of film, is that you can't lose highlight detail on color negative film. So as I bring up her face, the sky and all these highlights around her just kind of start glowing. So that's actually one of film shooter's greatest secrets is at any time you can just put someone's back to the sun so all the lights behind them meter for their face, overexpose that so the skin comes up to a nice bright tone and you're not gonna lose any of that highlight sky detail behind them. And metering is important because if you don't, you're gonna get what? Right, if you just, silhouette. you know, if you just, that right. exact same thing, if you just set your camera to auto, it's gonna compensate for the sky. You're gonna get shadow But dancing. by <laughs> either using a handheld meter or a spot meter right up on their face and then shooting it that on film, you're just gonna get that glowy, beautiful light. Now we're going to show you a variation on this with one of Tanya and Tia's shots, which we call 70s album cover light. This is our, this is your favorite light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hippie's favorite light. Hippie Imagine light. That. We should call it hippie light tea. I know we should. Um, let's see, which one do we want? I but you guys, I know you don't remember, but if you go to the Goodwill and you see those 70s album covers, there's always like this haze and like these flares, you know? Abba. Yeah, Abba. The key to getting it though, would be the only difference between Angel Singing Light and 70s album cover light is where you are as the photographer positioning yourself to the subjects. So, in general, the lens is really important that you choose for this too because you need a good, I like to use a wide angle lens and get close, but realistically, depending on how low the sun is, you can get this look any time of day. If you see in this picture here on the right with her holding her hat, um, the sun is coming through, but the sun was fairly low at that point. So 70s album cover light is great to get like in the evening, but you can get it at high noon too. The only difference is you're going to be beneath your subject and you want them over you. So the sun is blasting behind them and you're going to be in their shadow. That's the key importance. Most people don't get this right because they're not in the person's shadow. So when that light's coming down, the shadow's coming down, you crawl into their shadow, put them over you, and you're gonna, as your lens is in the shadow, no light flare. How you get the light flare is by moving that lens, peeking it from behind the shadow, all of a sudden you'll get these great little flares coming through. You're dancing with the light. You're, yeah, you just dance around with it, and mm -hmm. so beautiful. Or have them dance in kind of front of you. And go in and out. And like yeah, in and go and in and out. So mm -hmm. your, your lens sort of um, peeking around their shadow is how you get 70s album cover light. Do you guys feel like after today you will be able to see the light? Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. and feel it. And feel, feel it. Feel it from in here. Feel yeah, did you yeah. Feel I it? did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. My my favorite advice is to be doing this even when you're not shooting. Even when right. you don't have a camera. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting That's in the grocery advice. store, look mm -hmm. at the light. You're See, riding you in your car. You know, the sun's coming through your windshield. Yeah, Think right. about that. Yeah. These types of lights, you're gonna encounter almost every single one of them every single day. So everywhere learn to you recognize mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. In your house, in at work, everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> Big <laughs> it's so fun to step back and realize that there is so much variety and distinction and different mood you can capture just with whatever is around you, that you're not just limited to open shade or bright sun, that with a little bit of creativity you can get any mood you're trying to go for just using natural light. It was really amazing out there, I have to say. It was awesome. I can't. That's all I can say, it was awesome. So you walk through these scenarios and all of a sudden everything that you really just kind of knew in your gut before, when it gets explained it has completely new meaning and all of a sudden you just get it every time you'll see it. Just having that confidence, knowing that no matter what light I have, you know, now I know basically back there, you know, that north facing wall, knowing, you know, it, it's common sense, but to have someone tell you and to actually see it, you know, happening before your eyes has just been, Eye opening. <laughs>
It was awesome. It's just everything that I hoped it would be. I needed to uh, be pushed like outside the box, find the light, not be afraid of the light. Um, dramatic shots, it's what I needed and it was awesome. I, I thought it was pretty cool. They made it to where it all made sense and how I can use it. And then they said, they told me how to do it without even using a camera. Like he said, when I'm just shopping or whatever, I can just look for it um, wherever I am. And I think doing that would just help everything. I don't know, Ryan is, he's, he's funny. He, he, he's just a different person. What's next for Jeff is I want to just have the run of this place and I want to bring a ton of models out here and I want to shoot in every type of light scenario I can find in here. I'm going to go out and shoot away so I'm going to get me some girls and practice some of this light and get some of my peeps over here and we're going to go work it. I can't wait to go use the light. I hope they gain that it really is or can be so easy that that's part of the magic of film, that when you're using a great lab like Richard Photo Lab, you get your exposure right, you capture the moment you want, and your pictures are gonna come back looking almost finished. Even though the sun didn't come out and beam and give us this, ah, oh, moment, I felt like the students actually got it. They got what we were trying to teach them with or without the sun being there. It really was truly an amazing day, you know? Couldn't ask for more, except for maybe teeny tiny little bit more sun. Next week is gonna be great, because we're gonna take that knowledge of our light and with the students, and we're just gonna shoot. We're not gonna talk too much about what we're doing, just explain the basics and create some great images. All film was provided by Fuji Film. And a special thanks to Richard Photolab for processing all images in this episode. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com.